Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel. And today I wanna to bring you guys my updated CPU and GPU combos video for 2023 and even maybe into 2024. The reason why I'm updating this video is because Intel had one of the launches of all time, that being the 14th generation CPUs turned out to be a huge upset. They pretty much offered no uplift in performance over their 13th generation counterparts. And what that means is that quite a few of my combos from my previous CPU and GPU combos video, I wouldn't recommend actually pursuing building anymore. So more or less, I need to revamp all those recommendations in an updated video. And I think the timing is also pretty good as well because this is the time of the year many of you guys are probably gonna be building new computers or updating your current ones. And if that's you, you're in for a treat because I have revamped this video hopefully made it more coherent, more simplistic, and better to follow so you can get the best CPU and GPU combo for your current or next gaming PC. So trigger warning, if you're an Intel fanboy, you are not gonna like this video. And that is because I don't like you guys. It's just because LGA 1700 is at the end of its life, whereas AM5 is just starting off. There's only one CPU generation for right now, with Ryzen 7000, and there's confirmed support for that socket going at least until 2025. And in addition to that, AMD just confirmed they are bringing out some more AM4 last generation CPUs, which also makes AM4 now a more viable socket. So I'm sorry, AMD is the way to go for CPUs right now in 2023 and going into 2024. So with all of that out of the way, I do wanna mention once again, that links to every single one of these processors and graphics cards I'll be discussing in this video, as well as my recommended motherboards and RAM kits to pair up with these combos can be all found in the description below. And with all that said, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Editing gaming videos and traditional video editing software can be quite time consuming, which is why I suggest you think outside the box and try out Filmora 13 with their new AI assisted editing features. For instance, if we didn't know where to start with our video edit, we can press the AI Copilot button to ask how we can mask out our webcam footage to overlay over our gameplay footage. Here we can utilize the AI masking tool to help mask out our background without the need of a green screen, or better yet, we can ask the AI Copilot again to help generate a custom AI generated background photo for our backdrop. And if there happens to be any visual gaps within our video, we can utilize the AI text to video feature and quickly generate some B-roll to help fill in those visual content gaps for a more coherent video. And then once we have everything nice and tidy in our video and we're ready to publish it, we can use the AI thumbnail editor tool to get an attractive looking thumbnail that we can then use to publish across all of our social medias for our finished video. Fortunately, performing quick edits like this in Filmora 13 are now easier than ever thanks to its thorough yet simplified interface, AI Copilot Companion, and plethora of other creator-friendly features that should be really welcoming towards new users and users who want to take advantage of Filmora's new AI features. So if this new and improved version of Filmora 13 excites you, then I recommend you check the link at the top of the description for an exclusive offer. So for the first CPU and GPU combos for this video, which are gonna be for you PC gamers looking for the best bang for your buck, I'm gonna need you to like the video first. Okay, we good? All right, sweet. Right, okay, the coolest thing about these two combos I'm about to present is that I've actually put these to the test in some of my recent PC build videos with my last one, my $500 gaming PC build utilizing one of these and my upcoming $400 gaming PC build utilizing the cheaper of these two graphics cards and its performance was pretty surprising. But the target for both of these combos is going to be 1080p gaming and starting out on the lower end, I recommend you look at the Ryzen 5 4500. It's about 90 bucks right now, six cores, 12 threads, that's all you need. And just about the one downside with this CPU is that it's limited to PCI Gen 3.0 only, which can limit your graphics card selection a little bit, especially if you're looking into a lower end RX 6000 GPU that has limited PCI lanes. But to get around that, we can utilize a GPU 
like the Radeon RX 5700. And I know this box looks really foreign, but trust me, it's not. This is an RX 5700 I bought from AliExpress. I literally put this GPU in an upcoming PC build guide. It performs exactly like an RX 5700. I got it for 126 bucks and it comes with a two year warranty and uses the same AMD drivers as any other AMD graphics card you wanna get your hands on. And this has more PCI lanes on the card itself than an RX 6600. So that PCI Gen 3.0 lane limitation on the 4500 isn't going to be a problem. Pair that up with a B450 motherboard and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz cast lane C16 RAM. And yeah, this is a solid combo for 1080p budget PC gaming. But if you wanted a little more juice, then you have the Radeon RX 5700 XT at your disposal, which like the 5700, you can buy for brand new off of AliExpress, or you can get it used like what I did. And for the CPU, I recommend you get a Ryzen 5 3600 because it is a good bit faster than the 4500. It doesn't have that PCI Gen 3.0 limitation and then it's a bit faster for only about an extra 10 to $20 more. I think it's worth it. And you could still use a B450 motherboard with it to save on cost. So this will just be a slightly faster 1080p gaming PC for once again, a budget PC build. All right, next up, these are going to be my mid-ranged CPU and GPU combos. These are gonna be for either unquestionable 1080p gaming performance or entry-level 1440p gaming performance without destroying your bank account. And pretty much the CPU we're gonna be centering every single one of these combos around is going to be around the Ryzen 5 5600 because it's the best bang for the buck CPU on the market for the AM4 socket. Six cores, 12 threads, PCI Gen 4.0, plenty of cash and Getting this over a 5600X, despite the 5600X costing more, makes so much sense because the performance between these two CPUs are pretty much on par. So if you wanted unquestionable 1080p gaming, look no farther than pairing up a Ryzen 5 5600 with a Radeon RX 7600, which at the time of filming this video, you can get on discount for $240, which is a very competitive price for this graphics card. Now, even though this graphics card can do 1440p gaming, especially if it's gonna be on an esports title like Apex Legends, Fortnite, you name it, I would say for triple A PC gaming, it needs just a bit more juice because at the end of the day, it has an eight gigabyte 128 bit VRAM located on the graphics card. So it's not the best, but it's $240, which that makes up for it because it is on a pretty nice discount and it's pretty good bang for the buck performance. But now if you wanted entry level 1440p gaming performance, I think pairing up a Ryzen 5 5600 with the RX 6750 XT is actually the way to go because right now this graphics card is selling for $330. And between this and a 6700 XT, the 6750 XT has faster memory. So for only about $20 more, or maybe even $30 more, I think this is the better buy. Sure, it's gonna be hotter. Sure, it's gonna draw more power, but you can always undervolt this. And remember, you get faster memory on this that you can't find on the 6700 XT. So we want that just extra bit of juice to make sure that your 1440p gaming performance isn't going to be hindered. This graphics card is gonna be the way to go. But don't worry, there's more. I've actually got two more combos to show you guys that aren't necessarily for gaming, but go beyond gaming if you want something a little more specialized but can still do gaming on the side. So if you're looking for the best, I'd say mid-range gaming and video editing slash creativity PC, I think picking up not an A750, but an A770 right now for $200, $290 makes a lot of sense. If you actually look at benchmarks between the A770 versus the RTX 4060 or even the 4060 Ti, the A770 outperforms those graphics cards in video editing applications across the board. And that's probably because it comes with AV1. It has the quick sync decoder built in, which is a very versatile decoder for lots of different types of video footage. 
and it has the most VRAM for the dollar. Because for under 300 bucks, you're getting a graphics card with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And because I know I'm gonna be asked about it, if you at all wanted to dive into any 3D modeling or AI, there's no other graphics card that is better at doing that without dumping tons of money away than the RTX 4060. Right now it's sitting at $290, which isn't seeing the crazy discounts I was hoping for at this time of the year, but it's not completely terrible for its price. And once again, it's an NVIDIA graphics card. You're getting a whole lot of suites and features with it. Just when it comes to pure gaming performance, getting a 6750 XT or 6700 XT for just 10 to $20 more than this is going to absolutely blow it away. But like I said, if you need to do anything that dealt with CUDA, 4060 isn't too bad in this price range. And along with that, I wouldn't even get a 5600. I look at getting the 5700X because that CPU will net you the most amount of cores and threads for the money. And same goes for my last combo for video editing. So if you wanted a CPU with more beef without spending a whole lot more, the 5700X is going to be offering, like I said, the most cores and threads for the lowest price right now for a new PC build. Next, we're gonna cover some of the best high-end CPU and GPU combos for known compromises, 1440p, and even 4K gaming performance without completely blowing out your bank account. And it starts, or actually all of these combos are gonna be centered around this. I know it looks weird, but I've talked a lot about this CPU in the past. I just never sought out buying one, but I did. Anyways, let's open this up. What does this have? Oh, it's a, a Ryzen box. What could this be? Oh, it's the Ryzen 5 7500F. This is the really awesome CPU that AMD is not unleashing in the US and international markets. It's just limited to China, which is kind of a shame because you can grab this right now off of AliExpress for $172. It has nearly the same performance as a Ryzen 5 7600, or it pretty much does, and it comes close to the 7600X, and it comes with a stock cooler. Yeah, it's a really great deal. And this will work with any B650 or X670 motherboard you plop this into. It's pretty much a Ryzen 7600 without integrated graphics, but it's gonna cost you about 40 bucks less, which makes this a fantastic deal. So to kick things off, if you want a really strong performing 1440p gaming PC, then for about $750, I recommend picking up the Ryzen 5 7500F off of AliExpress, like what I did, along with the Radeon RX 6800, or if you live outside the United States, maybe a 7700 XT, but we'll get to that later. For all my US viewers, this probably is the best GPU deal right now out of this entire video. Currently on Amazon, you could snag this for $370, and this has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and it isn't actually gonna run super hot in your system, unlike the 6800 XT. It's just a really nice all-around graphics card, and oh, at its price, with the features you're getting and that amount of VRAM, it is too good to pass up right now. And get a $125 B650 motherboard like what I have linked in the description below from ASRock, could be micro ATX or ATX. And then for the RAM, ideally pick yourself up like a DDR5 kit of RAM that's 32 gigabytes, but runs at a speed of 5,600 megahertz with a cast latency of 32 to keep costs low, but still make sure that the performance of the RAM is still pretty supplement. But from what I've heard from those of you who live in different parts of the world, apparently RX 6800 stock is pretty much non-existent. And apparently the RX 7700 XT actually has relatively good pricing in comparison to the next AMD graphics card we're about to cover. So if you live in a part of the world where you can't get the RX 6800 for a good price, but it looks like the 7700 XT is a decent price, I would say at least maybe 70 to $100 cheaper in your currency versus the 7800 XT, then this might be worth it. I'm still waiting for it to go down in price a little bit more, but this is just the optional choice. Like I said, if you can pick up a 6800 for less, that would be my pick over this. It has more VRAM. Its raw performance is honestly the same as this graphics card. I made a whole video about it if you wanna check that out as well, but it's here as an optional choice. Uh, but then 
I have two more combos to show you guys in this high-end price range. And that is because I'm going to utilize two different graphics cards here. So at the $500 price point, you're getting some pretty darn good graphics cards. You can either get the Radeon RX 7800 XT or the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070. Both of these get my seal of approval. They're selling for really excellent prices. Both have their pros and cons, but you can't go wrong with either choice. And the 4070, honestly, is NVIDIA's best GPU they've released so far this generation. And I would have to say the exact same for the RX 7800 XT. But there is a pricing difference right now between both of these graphics cards. The 7800 XT is about $40 cheaper right now than the 4070 does come with more VRAM and does have faster raw performance. So if you're looking to build a budget 4K gaming PC with a graphics card that isn't going to obliterate your bank account, then getting an RX 7800 XT paired with a 7500F along with a B650 motherboard and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM would be pretty adequate for a just over $1,000 gaming PC build. But if you wanted to build a gaming PC that is just at 1440p, you don't want to look into 4K, and maybe you're more interested in ray tracing, then that's where the 4070 can come into play because it does outperform the RX 7800 XT in ray tracing across the board. But I'm not super crazy about recommending this for 4K gaming because at the end of the day, it does have a 12 gigabyte VRAM buffer on it, whereas this has a 16. So as time ages on, I suspect this graphics card will be able to handle higher end, higher resolution gaming better than the RTX 4070. But right now, like I said, both graphics cards are great in the current market. And for this last segment of the video, we're gonna cover ultra performance CPU and GPU combos, which quite frankly, if you're still watching the video, you might as well click off because the last combos I just covered for 1440p and even 4K gaming are all you need. They'll satisfy the needs of pretty much 95% of PC gamers. So the first combo I'm gonna recommend is going to be for pretty good 4K gaming. You're still gonna spend a lot of money, but it could be worse. So for the CPU, I think the Ryzen 7 7700 right now is priced pretty adequately. You can grab this for about $300. And beyond this, you can get the 7700X. However, that costs about an additional $40 over this. And if you're gonna be looking at getting a 7700X, then I might as well just jump up to a 7800X 3D, which we'll cover on later in the video. So I don't think the 7700X is completely worth it because you might as well jump up to this for an extra 50 bucks. But if you wanna keep things down on budget, the 7700 is not too bad. Eight cores, 16 threads, We'll get the job done and it will be faster than those six core Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Then for the GPU, I don't have it here on the table, but imagine that I have a Radeon RX 7900 XT with me on the table. I'm a big fan of this GPU right now because it's getting some pretty nice discounts and it comes with 20 gigabytes of VRAM and that is essential for high resolution 4K gaming. If you're spending upwards of $700 to $800 on a graphics card, it should come with plenty of VRAM because the target audience who's probably spending that much on a graphics card are probably also gonna pair up a 4K monitor with one of these CPU and GPU combos in this expensive price range. And the more VRAM you have, the better, which is why I'm specifically recommending the 7900 XT because its other counterpart from NVIDIA, the RTX 4070 Ti, comes with only 12 gigabytes of VRAM which is embarrassing for a graphics card in its price. And I personally don't see that graphics card aging too well going into the future with once again, only 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Whereas 20 on the 7900 XT is going to be very well for those of you who want a graphics card that can last for a decently long time. And then this next combo I'm gonna show you guys is honestly where it stopped. This is the epitome, this is the zenith of PC gaming CPU and GPU combos without blowing away absolute mother loads of money. And that would have to be getting the Ryzen 7 7800X3D paired with a Radeon RX 7900XTX. Now I know it sounds like I'm really peddling Radeon in this upper price range. I just see these GPUs as a way to get high-end gaming without spending thousands of dollars because the 7800XTX 
can be found right now for $950 and it probably will go on discount this holiday season around $900. So for a graphics card with 24 gigabytes of VRAM and with as much raw performance as this offers, it's a really nice GPU. And like I said, for those of you who need a 4K gaming GPU, this will absolutely cover all of those boundaries that you'd want. There's one thing this GPU though, especially lacks on as well as the 7900 XT, which I'll cover very soon in my next combo. But for the majority of you watching this video, you don't even need this. But if you needed something that was wicked fast, this would be it without, again, spending tons of money. And I would probably pair up an X670 motherboard with this CPU just cause, I mean, I guess pairing up a B650 motherboard with this CPU, which absolutely works, as I showed in my $2,000 gaming PC build, may look weird to some of you watching this video, so that's where the X670 recommendation comes in, even though you shouldn't overclock these X3D CPUs, but just wanna include it in the combo nonetheless. And look at that, we're topping out at about $2,000 for the recommended PC build at this price range. So let's cover the last combo in this video. So I actually built this computer, literally, in a recent video. But I'm letting you know that it's so fast that I can't comprehend how much faster it would be versus this combo that I just showed you guys. And that's gonna be the fanboy PC. Some will argue that spending the extra like $1,000 to get a GPU that costs as much as one month's rent and a CPU that can be your own personal space heater will transcend your PC gaming experience to a point where you achieve human evolution or some kind of human ascension. Like betting an extra $1,000 apparently makes you just a better PC gamer, which it doesn't. So for those of you guys who just need those bragging rights in your online arguments, or more specifically, if you're looking for a PC that can do path tracing in Alan Wake 2 or Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K, then I think grabbing an RTX 4090, which is the fastest graphics card on the market with an i9-14900K, technically the fastest gaming CPU on the market, is going to be the absolute fastest bet, but it costs about an extra $1,000 over the previous CPU and GPU combo that I just talked about. And I feel like at that point, you have to ask yourself, is spending that extra $1,000 really going to make a difference? Are you going to visually notice that difference? Because I feel like your wallet would see more of that difference, which is why I kind of don't look towards this combo favorably, but I know I need to cover it nonetheless, because you guys just want to see technically the best of the best, which would be this, but it comes at a hefty premium. So hopefully I didn't get carried away in this CPU and GPU combos video, but Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and made it to this point in the video. And if you did, a like would be appreciated. And if you like these videos, probably want to subscribe because I'm going to make more of them when the time comes. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterbolt channel signing out.